We're here with Adel Bally, the CEO of Competitive Green Technologies based in Leamington, Ontario. Adel, when we first met, this was a couple of years ago, you were just in at the early stages of, of testing miscanthus as a, as a composite material in, in the use of flower pots and bio bins. And I know that evolved into auto parts. Can you tell us how the company is shaping up? Sure. Um, actually, it's been a very interesting journey. We have been very honored by having a lot of uh, support from the Government of Canada at different levels, the federal, the provincial, and uh, that support through AFC, through AAC, through IRAP uh, has really resulted, and OAFT has played a very important role, has resulted in us being able to really accelerate our research and uh, take product to market. We diversified from doing uh, miscanthus in polypropylene for flower pots and bio bins to using miscanthus now a variety of ways. For example, converting it into a biocarbon to reinforce polypropylene and nylon for automotive parts. And uh, we are very happy to inform you that uh, a small Canadian company is now on the forefront with uh, some leading OEMs, one in Germany, one in the US, in trying to take a lightweighting proposition to market, which is the use of biocarbon to replace other fillers like glass and like uh, talc, which have been used so far. So it's been a very good journey, a very uh, laborious journey, a hard journey, but a fulfilling journey so far in being able to actually get Canadian technology um, across Europe and across North America being recognized as being a true, sustainable way of lightweighting automotive applications, as one example, to the biocarbon idea. Secondly, we've expanded now into food packaging applications, and uh, the most recent success in that is that of a company called Club Coffee, who um, approached us um, maybe about now one and a half years ago for the first time and said, hey, we want to get differentiated and want to try and create a compostable single-serve hot beverage coffee pot. And the University of Guelph was closely, closely involved. They are the ones who developed this. The technology is theirs, and we helped in being able to commercialize it at a different level to try to get now close to about 200,000 pounds a month uh, made to be able to get and the cool part of this is it's using, again, a waste stream, a waste stream called coffee shaft. Uh, coffee shaft is the skin of a coffee bean, which the University of Wells formulation uh, uses to a pretty significant extent, actually, in this formulation. So it's competitive at three different levels. It's performance competitive, it's process competitive, meaning thereby same injection molding process as before, and third, it is price competitive. So that's been really the University of Guelph's major focus in all their research so far, uh, working with us, and that is to always try and start something from a customer-centric standpoint and end again with the customer. So you actually can take things to market in terms of the biomaterial economy. So it's been a very, very interesting journey so far, and we kind of just started, so it's, it's continuing. You've partnered in a very big way with the Bioproducts Discovery and Development Center here in Guelph, Ontario. Sure. Can you tell me a little bit, just about how that evolved and, and how important that is to the growth of competitive green technologies? It is, it is pivotal. It is, it is the foundation on which our technology is based. And the way that the BDDC, the Bioproducts Development Center, as it's called, BDDC, the way it works is, again, very different from most other research organizations. They always want to understand an underlying real problem in the market. They want to get to the bottom of it and understand what real value can be created through a bioproduct option. So it's not substituting A for B, it's creating a market which actually satisfies a latent or an expressed need. So lightweighting an automotive, uh, creating, a, getting away from the landfill in the case of food packaging, these are real issues, real problems, which the BDDC has addressed. So their involvement with us since now the last nearly six years has been critical, absolutely fundamental in being able to take things to market.
My final question for you, Adel. You said it many times, and I, uh, it's always hit home. Being green isn't good enough. You've got to be competitive. Can you explain what you mean by that? I totally can, and I can say this to you that when I, the company's name was given, it was competitive green technologies, and the operative word is competitive. Um, when I say competitive, I mean it in three very distinct ways. The first is you have to meet the performance criteria of the customer. Without that, obviously, there's no application possible. The second is very few people in the customer base want to change the way they've made products. So if they were injection molding something and you say, you got a compression mold my, my resin, that won't cut it. You've got, if they say, I, was, I had a cycle time of let's say 20 seconds and you say, oh, but my resin, it's got to be 80 seconds, it won't cut it. So from a point of view of performance and the point of view of process, which is the con conversion of the resin to a product, on both these fronts you've got to be competitive. And then again, very importantly, you've got to be price competitive, meaning thereby if, you consume, if the molder consumes a little bit less energy because he runs your resin cooler or he has a lower cycle time, he's prepared to give you kudos for that and give you some kind of a margin for that, but the total cost of that product cannot exceed what he was paying for earlier. So competitive in three ways, performance, process, and price. And that's been the driver of all our products so far being taken to market.